Mother go out Earth? nude, but wear a hat. <laughs> so you cover your... If you're going out, it's, it's really good to do that, right? If anyone gets arrested, they come after you. <laughs> Public indecency. I told them it was okay to go out, to walk around. They're Although, not nude as long as they're wearing a hat. Although it's good for you, I don't think the people are ready for that. Okay. I don't think civilization is ready for nude uh, sunbathers. I don't think civilization is ready for any of my advice. <laughs>Is sunshine good for us? Should we be out in the sun? Well, that's really what I wanted to discuss. This idea that um, some sun is very healthy and good for us, and too much sun can be harmful. And how do we um, weigh how much sun to get, what time of day, how much to get? I want people to be very clear with the recommendations so they can maximize their lifespan. Right. What I'm saying here is pretty something unusual. I'm saying that we can maximize our lifespan add to our longevity, add to our immune system, add to the anti-cancer benefits of a healthy diet with the proper use of sunshine. Mm -hmm. Pretty, okay, so I mean, typically when you're thinking about healthy eating, a healthy lifestyle, you're not like, oh, and sunshine. Yeah, exactly. But you're saying it really does matter. Yeah, it does. It can help a lot. And we're saying that like the light-dark cycles, the circadian ryth rhythms, play just like food rhythms. You don't want to eat before bedtime. You don't want to get the right sunshine in relation to your food, in relation to your life, which all matters. So the first thing I'm saying is that the infrared light is most um, absorbable and, and from, comes from sunshine in the morning hours when, for, when it first gets bright out, like between 6.30 and 9 in the morning or well, 7 and 9 in the morning. that's my favorite time of day. Right. So the infrared is the most healing part of sunshine and that exposure to infrared um, also stops the production of melatonin which you want to have happen, so you produce mostly serotonin during the day, because you want to consolidate your melatonin at night. And if you stay indoors and don't get exposed to infrared in the morning, melatonin production could continue into daylight hours. So you're advising us to be outside early. Exactly. So it's not always the brightest sun, the strongest sun, that's the best for us. That's right. By 10 o'clock you have UVA coming in, and then by 12 o'clock you have UVB. UVB is the, is the sunshine that burns you mm -hmm. and raises your vitamin D the most, but that has the potential for more damage. Right. And it's not the type of sunshine that's really going to heal you, even though it's going to, the healing rays of sunshine, emotionally healing and immune system supporting, those most beneficial sun, um, sun products come in the early morning sun. So, so I'm, I'm not trying to get like super deep into the science, but you mentioned melatonin and serotonin. Uh -huh. So melatonin is that hormone that chemical that helps us sleep yes exactly. what is it a hormone yeah hormone. it's a neurohormone neurohormone okay and then serotonin that makes us happy right it elevates our mood and it makes us more alert okay so those kind of go through our body or or are more elevated at different times of day yes you um if you're not getting sunshine in the morning then you're allowing melatonin production to continue into daylight hours wow. which doesn't consolidate your melatonin to a peak in the evening around nine o'clock at night to make you go to sleep so you might have a harder time falling asleep and staying asleep mm -hmm. because you allowed melatonin because almost so much melatonin the body can produce and you don't want to produce it at night and during the day you just want to produce it at the time at night and consolidating your melatonin is associated with lower rates of cancer oh, wow. so if you expose yourself to wake up to use a computer or your phone you turn the lights on or you're going to bed very late and watching tv through the night and then sleeping through the daylight hours those things are not good for your long-term health. Because they're messing up that... It's, it's messing up this combination of consolidating your neural hormones. So you have a good spike of melatonin consolidated when you're sleeping and a good, like, nice lift of serotonin when you're in daylight hours. You don't want to mix them together and have it all be flat. What's if that you, called? Circadian... Circadian rhythm. Yes, right. I've the heard Circadian that. rhythm is important. And, and, you know, we talked about in an, early po in an earlier podcast about gardening being effective for longevity. For sure. So now I'm adding something additional and saying one reason gardening is effective for longevity is you people wake up and garden before the sun gets too bright and you start to get burning. So the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is you go outside and you work in your garden mm -hmm. and you don't wear sunscreen because you want the skin to be exposed to UV. I was going to ask that. Yeah. So because, I, you know, since I was a little kid, you've been warning me about getting sunburned. You know, you've been like a stickler for sunscreen. You wear every hat, not sunscreen protection. I don't put a hat on until 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so it's actually... No hats, okay. no sunglasses, 
no sunscreen really? early morning. You want the natural UV red to get on your skin and into your eyes. Because I was going to ask, like, I kind of try to avoid the sun, like the plague, to keep my skin in good condition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm hiding under a beach umbrella and stuff like that. But in the morning, it's like, let it rip. The morning, it protects your skin. It actually makes, when you get the UV red light, you know how oh those, gosh. they're all in the, va the Vogue now, these red lights people yeah. are going under? I didn't like, know you read Vogue. <laughs> in Vogue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but so these... Yeah, and like the fa red face lights. The red they're, face lights. They're supposed to be anti-aging and stuff like that. You're saying there's truth to that. You yes, they're anti-aging in the sense that it protects your skin against wrinkling. It's exposure to later light in the day, the UVB, but most the UVA, mostly UVB that wrinkles your skin. Oh, I'm but sure. the morning infrared light makes the skin more resistant to wrinkling and has anti-aging effects. Oh, so you don't want to wear... Just like cataracts... Incre you increase your risk of cataracts when you get too much exposure to later day sun, which too much UVB, and then you are want to wear a hat with a brim so your head's in the shade, or sunglasses if you're not wearing a hat with a brim, or right. both, to keep yourself from getting the, those UVB lights in your eyes, but not in the morning. In the morning, you want the infrared to protect you, to raise melatonin, and protects you against skin cancer, protects you against cataract, and it supports immune function. You're saying it's even good for your eyes in even the morning. Even good for your eyes and your skin. Because something that you said that surprised me was, you know, you always said wear a hat, and I really try to wear a hat, but because I have a hat on a lot of the time, I'm not the biggest sunglasses person. Yeah, me neither. But you're saying it, you want to protect your eyes in that if you're out in the middle of the day, if you're outside and it's really bright. It well, is I don't damaging. wear sunglasses because I have a big brim hat, right. so my eyes are getting covered in the shade. They're, my eyes Right. shade um but if I'm you more, didn't sun, sunglasses are if i did if a, a lot of women don't wear hats they wear sunglasses instead and they're wearing makeup that has sunscreen in it mm -hmm. so they just wearing sunglasses which is okay so either a hat or sunglasses or both in the day in the heat of the day in the hot of the day but not in the morning because you're not going to get the longevity effects of sun and the infrared that you're not supposed to cover your eyes for you want it to come in through the eyes Kara so, actually told me that women are getting lower rates of skin cancer because their makeup has sunscreen in it too and we put it on every single day so that's actually protecting your skin and that men are having who don't ever wear makeup or anything on their face are getting more damage let's talk about that because um your risk of getting skin cancer is proportional to the amount of times you've been sunburned in your life so you want to avoid ever being burned by the sun and too much tanning of your skin and too much darkening of your skin obviously is the more wrinkling of your skin too so we want to avoid the UVB light, but it's the UVB light after 12 noon, between 12 and 3, it's at the highest, that gives you the most vitamin D formation. Mm. And vitamin D formation, so we're saying here that the optimal protection for the bones and the immune system to protect against cancer and against infection is to have the vitamin D blood test to be between like 30 and 45. That's okay. the blood test result. Got it. And because we're trying to ba be balanced with the conservative use of sunshine and the conservative use of supplements, we're not avoiding all sunshine and then having to take a high dose supplement, which is we're not taking the a lot of sun and then avoiding use of all supplements. We're right. balancing out a little sun and you get a lot of vitamin D production from just if you're a Caucasian, just five minutes of sunshine. Five under 10 really? minutes gives you a, a huge amount of vitamin D. So it's OK to go out in the sun without sunscreen under 10 minutes. In between in, 12 and 3? In between 12 and 3. Because that's And if you're, if you're um, black, you can take, then it's double the, they need double the amount of sunshine to get the same amount of vitamin D formation. So they're getting um, 15 to 25 minutes or 20 minutes of sunshine. Let's say we're goal is to get 10 minutes of sunshine. That's it for the day. We'll get plenty of vitamin D proportion because more than that will cause skin damage between 12 and 3. Right. So it's like a little but, bit, not enough to cause damage, but a little bit to be like, hey, I'm here. That's correct. I'm getting some vitamin D. Yeah, so I'll go out for a swim, let's say. Yeah. Where we'll go without sunscreen on. Because I'm always and, trying to hide. I mean, you yeah. you were so adamant that we were going to get burn and ruin our skin. Yeah, because you're out all day long. Yeah. You're I, out for yeah, hours I, and hours. It's true. And, I can't you know, get enough. And people are getting burnt and damaging their skin and causing yeah. wrinkling. Yeah. You know? Well, uh. with vitamin D, we, we need to supplement it as well. You don't recommend that we only get it from the sun. Because we and don't... It's not enough, right? It probably would be enough if you lived in California all year, or it was in the sunshine state. Right. But across the country, people don't get enough from sun exposure. And how regimented and careful am I to always get, you know, 10 minutes of sun during the day? I'm working, you know, indoors. So we take the vitamin D supplement in addition to getting the judicious use of sunshine to keep our level in that perfect range right. between 30 and 45. And the little bit of sun 
prevents us from having to use too much vitamin D supplementation. You don't want to be really having people using 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000, which other people are recommending. I'm recommending people take 2,000 because that gets you the, then you have, and, and then if you're in the wintertime, you're not living in the, in the, in California, are you living in rainy states, more indoor states, yeah, colder sure. states? Then they can get making sure that vitamin D is in that range all year. Right. So we use supplements and sunshine both. But even if you lived in a in the a climate like New York or Canada or Montreal, let's say, you still want to get morning sun outdoors as much as you can when the weather permits. Right. So you're saying, are you encouraging not, people to bundle up? Be cool, like wear heavy jackets. Go out jackets. for a morning walk. Yeah. yeah but if you can't. So you have three or four months of the year, you're not getting out that much. Right. But you're still doing it when you can, when the weather's nice. Sure. Because so it has a beneficial effect. So what do you recommend for those other months? Well, for people who are light dependent, who don't do well without light, they can use a, a light, they can use a light box. Yeah. But for other rest of people, they can just take, be, be there, taking their vitamin D supplements. Right. Make sure not to miss yeah. those. Not, and and uh, you think taking those 200, 2000 IU, is that it? 2000 yes. IU of vitamin D throughout the whole year is good? Like, can you get, is it harmful to get too much vitamin D? Not really. Okay. It, not if you're not not if you're not overdoing supplements because you don't get too much from the sun. Right. And so it'll keep you that. That's kind of like a con, like a, a optimal conservative dose. So you're not going to ever a, really overdo it. It's an optimal it. conservative dose, right? Got you it. don't overdose it. So that's what we're, we're trying to have people not need to take high dose vitamin D because we're saying well, it's not good to drive your level up too high. Right. And keep in mind that the that the after you get five or ten minutes, we're saying five minutes of sun exposure, but yeah. for a person who produces a, a good amount of vitamin D in the skin, the oils on the skin have to stay on the skin for hours after the sun exposure. So you came indoors after your sun exposure and took a shower with soap and wiped the oils off your skin, you wouldn't get the benefit of the vitamin D absorption. You have wow. to not shower after being outdoors. Got it. That's how uh, they did a study on surfers in Hawaii uh -huh. and they found that when they came in, they, they were vitamin D deficient. They followed these Caucasian surfers in Hawaii they, because they came in off the beach and they would get into the showers and they washed with soap. And even though they were out there for an hour, they still didn't get enough vitamin D. So it has to stay on for hours, like not even right. one hour, 30 minutes is okay. That's why I only shower once a month, whether I need it or not. <laughs> I mm. knew the joke was coming here. <laughs> okay. You like, oh yeah, <laughs> smelly, sweaty, and not showered. Perfect. Right, yeah. yeah. So nice. Mom will be so proud. And now I'm looking for a scientific reason why I convince Lisa why it's okay to leave the toilet seat up. <laughs> I'm sure you're looking through all the evidence. <laughs> no doubt about that. I remember what I was going to say. Finally, okay. um, you're actually really inspiring me. So when I lived in Hawaii, I would, it was too hot to really go out. And I loved walking and it was just too hot to go out at noon. Like no one wants to walk at noon in Hawaii. It just isn't fun. So I would go out at 630 and that's when I would take my morning walk and I would wear a hat. I wish I did it now, but I would wear a hat, but I kind of stopped doing that. And I wake up now and I just get right to my work. And that's just so not productive to my whole life. Like right. that's not what I should be doing. And when you take that walk after lunch to get the real vitamin D, yeah. then you should wear a hat. Right. Because then you don't want the sun beating in your eyes because then you're high risk of cataracts. Right. And you don't want the sun, you see my wrinkling around my eyes from all the sunshine exposure. You still look handsome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, so you, that's what you want to wear a hat, but you want 40% of your skin exposed when you're going with that five or 10 minutes. So you want to have like, um, be on shorts, uh, you know, your sleeves open. Oh, so you're you saying know. like you can wear a hat, cover your face, but still get getting that vitamin D through your legs, body. It doesn't right. have to be at your face. Like right. you could wear sunglasses, a tank top, no shirt, it's shorts, good to know. and but don't but say it, hit me, mother. Go out Earth. nude, but wear a hat. <laughs> so you cover your. If you're going out, it's, it's really good to do that, right? If anyone gets arrested, they come after you. <laughs> Public indecency. I told them it was okay to go out to walk around. They're Although, not nude as long as they're wearing a hat. Although it's good for you, I don't think the people are ready for that. Okay. I don't think civilization is ready for nude uh, sunbathers. I don't think civilization is ready for any of my advice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people are slowly changing. I don't know. I see a bunch of restaurants mm -hmm. popping up that you mm -hmm. really would be proud of the food.